Hi, my name is Julie Hollinger and I am the Programs Manager at the Petawawa Military Family Resource Center and I want to welcome you to today's Fireside Chat. This is our fourth edition of the Fireside Chat and this is a weekly broadcast that we are doing to talk about the various programs that are available through the PMFRC. Um, as you know, our doors are closed right now and unfortunately people can't come in and come to our programs the way they used to in the way that uh, that we, we've all sort of gotten used to into a routine, but we are still here for you. We are still running a lot of these programs. So we wanted to talk to you every week about a different program, about things that are still available to you and how you reach out to us. I have a number of guests today and we are going to be talking about special needs inclusion programs. So um, I wanna introduce Darby Briggs, who is our in community, community engagement uh, coordinator, Amy McKenzie, who is our special needs inclusion programmer, Chris Quigley, our family advocacy coordinator, uh, Claudia Beswick, our exec executive director, and our special guest this week, um, we are inviting our community partners to join us to talk about their programs and give you a bigger picture of resources that are available. We have Brittany Robbins from PSP in Petawawa. Thanks for joining us, Brittany. We appreciate it. Claudia, we have gotten in the tradition of starting these fireside chats with you and asking you to give us an update. What's happening at the PMFRC? Um, do you know when things are going to be turned to, about to normal and uh, what can people expect I guess in the coming week. So there's no new, no new news to share today. Much like you said, we're still closed to the public. Uh, but I think um, new stuff coming up, you will see a lot of the departments are posting various um, activities and um, partic uh, participating in, uh, I think there's like free uh, child and youth stuff that's going out. Families can register for picking up that package by making an appointment. You can do participate in the mental health challenge. So every day there's something new going up on the Facebook page for mental health supports. Um, there is a draw at the end of the month. So check in with that. We have a new newsletter coming out in two weeks and a lot of our new stuff you'll find uh, on the Facebook page as well as our YouTube site, which uh, is being populated regularly with a bunch of stuff that families can do with their children. So activities for the whole family, uh, even for those families that don't have little ones at home, there's uh, stuff there for you as well. There is going to be a town hall again uh, tomorrow, Thursday at 4 p.m. with the base commander and the CEO of her services. So stay tuned for that. We'll get some information out on that probably by the end of the day today. Um, so that post is actually up. We went up with it a little bit early. It is there. So if you want to watch that, uh, come back to the PMFRC Facebook page at four o'clock tomorrow. That's where it's going to pop up. If you have any burning questions, you want to ask the PMFRC or if you want to ask about uh, the garrison uh, protocols and things that's happening with COVID-19, if you add a comment to that post, um, we will be sure to raise it in the meeting and get that answer for you. So um, yes, you can ask questions while the session goes but if you get that question in early maybe you can jump the queue and we can make sure that we get to that for you. Darby um, let's go over to you. Uh, the PMFRC has a number of special needs programs. Can you sort of give us an overview of what is available in the regular world? Definitely Julie. In our regular programming we have actually a dedicated special needs and inclusion programmer Amy McKenzie and she runs some fantastic programs. We have our exceptional families network it's a monthly peer support group for parents or other adult family members who have a loved one with any type of special needs. We have our sensory aquatic program, which is a partnership program with PSP Aquatics. Uh, we offer a monthly family swim time with only 30 people or less in the two pools. So it's not overstimulating as, as much as a public swim is. This is a program open to any family who would benefit from smaller groups in the pools. For example, maybe your children don't have special needs, but the adults find the crowds overwhelming, then this is definitely a program for you. We have our Building Blocks Lego Club, which is a really fun one. It's a social skills club using Lego to practice taking turns, working with other children in small groups, while having fun with Lego, which every kid loves. We've also got our children's friendship training, really good for posting season. It's a social skills club that use, um, program, sorry, where children get to practice meeting new people, joining a group of children at play, and being a good host on a play date or making phone calls. And then we also have our puzzle project. It's a peer support group for siblings of children with youth um, who have special needs. So there's definitely something for everybody in the family in the regular world. <laughs> 
Amy, you uh, have uh, had the challenge of taking a lot of these programs and making it work in a social distancing world, which is a little bit difficult because we're used to a certain way of doing things. Um, I have two quick kind of questions for you. I'm going to throw it to you at the same time and you can answer however you want. Um, can you talk about how programs have changed uh, in a new social distancing world and what's still available? And talk about who can access the programs. I know a lot of the people who come to us, they worry about do they need to have a diagnosis? Do they have to have paperwork? What do they need to take advantage of these programs? Sure. So we've so far we've adopted a couple of our programs and we've come up with some new things that we can offer in the social distancing world. So the Exceptional Families Network, we've decided to continue, um, but we are meeting on Zoom. So we still meet on the first Thursday of every month, but we meet a little later in the evening around 8.30 p.m. when the little one's already in bed and the parents can relax and chat and still have that peer support as a group and also speak with me about resources. So that's still continuing every month. Um, I'm still also available to talk with families. So um, they can email me. Um, I believe Sarah Jean's gonna post our website in the, uh, in the chat there. So my email address is on there and um, we can still talk and I can still provide you with resources. Um, we can talk about Petawawa if you're new, you know, if you're just coming here now um, and we can talk about other resources that are available. So I'm still available for that. Since we can't meet in person to do any kind of make and take type of project right now. Um, we've come up with something new called the program in a box. So this is the idea of this is that you'll register for the program, you'll receive a box and in it will be the instructions, some ideas, some fun stuff and all the materials that you need to do some sort of activity with your child. So this month's activity uh, is the sensitive plant. So it's, uh, it's on our page. I believe there's one left that's not spoken for. So if anyone wants to go into Cath Connection right now, I believe there's still one more. Um, and Families in the next week will be receiving those kits to do some activities with the plant um, that reacts when you touch it. So if you didn't get in with the plant, there'll be another program coming sometime soon? Absolutely. So future programs in a box include sensory play, um, include transitions, creating a transitions box, and some building some more, uh, more hands-on things that you can do with your child that has a learning component as well. Um, and then to answer your question about uh, diagnosis, I don't require any kind of diagnosis uh, to talk to me about programs. So anyone is welcome to talk to, uh, to, talk to Darby or I um, about supports that we could offer um, for a child or adult in your family. Um, and there's probably something we can offer for everyone. We have a, a wide range of programs. So something like the sensory aquatic program, you don't need a diagnosis to you know, go swim as a family. If it's, that's the kind of program that would benefit you, you're welcome to attend. Same with something like the Building Blocks Lego Club. Our program is richer with a diverse group of kids. So for some children, they're building with Lego because they need practice taking turns. Other kids just love Lego and wanna play with other kids. So it's more fun when we have a really diverse group of kids. So everyone's welcome. And that's what inclusion is all about at the end of the day. Absolutely. Um, Amy did mention Sarah Jane. In case you were looking at the boxes, trying to figure out who she is, Sarah Jane is not on our screen, but she is a really, really important part of our fireside team. Um, she is watching the chat. Um, as we go through, some of us are going to be talking about links, telephone numbers, email addresses where you can reach out. Sarah Jane is monitoring the chat. And as we talk about those things, she's going to add that to the comment section. So don't worry about grabbing a pen or missing anything or us talking too quickly. That's all going to be in the chat section. You're going to be able to find that later. Claudia, uh, back to you. Um, partnerships are really important at the, at the PMFRC, and we work very closely with a lot of organizations, specifically in the area of special needs inclusion. Can you talk about some of the partnerships that we have built and, and how that makes our program better? Absolutely. So partnerships are key and critical to any MFRC. And I think no matter which um, base you're at, you'll see that the MFRC is always collaborating with both base and community partners. So here specifically with our base partners, we've shared activities with PSP, with uh, Brittany and the rec department, um, with health promotions as well, with OSIS. Uh, there isn't any department within the organization that hasn't partnered with somebody on the base. In addition to that, we collaborate a lot nationally as MFRC, so we share best practices. If something happens at one base, families, we, we love to hear about that and see what we can do. It's easy for us to connect. We collaborate all the time on that front. And specifically, uh, Trenton uh, MFRC, they were instrumental in getting us um, the SNP funding, and Amy can explain more about that. But Trenton took the lead in getting this funding and it is something that they're sharing with all Ontario MFRC. So there is a level of support for families that could potentially be consistent um, no matter where they go. And so in order for us to better support the whole family unit, 
the partnership and the collaboration is so very important. And I think if I can leave with one thing, the basis of the collaboration and the partnership is that no door is the wrong door. So at any point in time, we're constantly connecting with our community partners as well to see what's available and accessible for families in the community. So if you're not sure where to go, give us a call and we will either support you or refer you or give you an option of what um, would best fit what your family needs in that moment. I think I've said it on every single broadcast every week and I don't want to talk for Brittany, but I I know that uh, she's going to chime in and, and agree with us on this one. We would much rather that family members or families or CF members call us and ask the question. If we don't know the answer, if we're not the right person, we are going to help you. We're going to find a link for you. We'll at least point you in the right direction. But we would rather have you ask the question than have you sit there and say, you know what, I'm not going to bug them because it, it may not be their, their, uh, their place, their opportunity, their department. Call us anyway. Let's see what we can do for you. We would rather have you ask that question than have you sit there and then not get the support of the services that you need. And, we want, and we, want oh, to, we want to share also that it's not just a matter of here are the resources, here are the numbers. We're going to actually help you transition to that resource. So I think that's important that you're not kind of left as a family member looking for information. You know, where else can you turn if nobody answers that phone? We want to help um, facilitate that, um, that additional support. That's a good. That's a good point, Brittany. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you uh, you joining us today. Special needs uh, inclusion. It's a really big category. It's a big topic, and I know that PSP has worked hard to initiate a number of programs. Can you talk about some of the programs that are available from a PSP perspective, um, and uh, and what's available now, and I guess during the regular schedule when we are not all in our homes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first off, thank you so much for having me. This is exciting. I'm glad I can uh, share with everybody what's going on. So um, as Claudia was saying, we're in the same boat uh, as Team FRC. Our doors are closed right now. Um, the facilities are closed, but we are still doing online programming. Um, that happens across Canada, like all of the PSP bases are doing programming. So, you know, we're able to share that now since it's virtual. So there are those options, but specifically here in Petawawa, I have a before and after school at home edition program that I've been posting on our PSP Petawawa Facebook page. And it also goes out on our Instagram and sorry, there's a motorcycle. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so that program, um, it's not specifically tailored to special needs but I do try to put things in there for families with children who have special needs. So I've highlighted in one of the videos, the videos go out on Thursday, there was the Child Mind Institute, for example. So they have some really, really great resources on that website and I highlight some of those on my video just to help parents navigate through that website and access some of those resources. Same thing with uh, Google just put out a teach from home uh, website. So they also have specific resources for families uh, who have children with special needs. So I highlighted that again in last week's video. So I'm going to keep trying to put that stuff in, make sure that the program is inclusive for everybody and all needs. So that's kind of what we're doing on the virtual side of things um, and what we're doing right now during COVID. But normally we do have um, like our programs, our approach is always that they're integrative. So I, our general programs like summer camp, which people are obviously probably curious about right now. Um, we do not know if summer camp is going to run at this time. I wish I had more answers, but we don't. We're waiting for more information from the government and then more information from our headquarters. So it's a process, but um, that program typically is uh, integrative. So you know, we work with parents. Uh, Christina Slaney is actually uh, the, the supervisor that I put in the lead for anything related to special needs. So parents typically reach out to her. Uh, she does a little interview with them, asking questions to each of their child's needs. And then we discuss, you know, how summer camp would go. We talk about funding and that's where we team up with TMFRC to figure out different funding avenues for the parents. And again, we guide them through that application process and how to get those funds. Uh, we work with uh, the county as well with their integration services and look for uh, funding through those options. 
And then on our end, we also have some funding that comes in. Again, this year, uh, probably not gonna happen just with everything that's going on, but typically we would have funding from corporate and we also get funding, say we apply for two, True Patriot Love funding, things like that. So the whole goal is for parents to be able to send their kids to camp and if they have special needs, they can have a one-to-one -one support worker, but because that is so expensive, it is an additional cost to have that one-to-one that -one support. We want to be able to provide uh, at least some coverage uh, for, for those weeks that, that a family wants to attend. So, I mean, beyond that, we hire a certain amount of support workers uh, for the summer, and then the families are teamed up with different support workers kind of depending on needs. It's a continuous process, you know, if, you know, somebody gets teamed up and it's not a good fit or something like that, we'll find other support workers and we make it work so that the summer is the best uh, possible for those families. So that's kind of on the summer camp piece and we do something similar in our before and after school program, but we don't have specific support workers for that just again because of that funding piece and how much it does cost. But we do have a variety of kids with special needs that come to our before and after school program. And we find that because it is a, a shorter period of time in the morning and the afternoon, we are able to make those accommodations. We're able to put some more staff in there to be able to help. It's just, again, that communication piece. We need to be able to communicate with the parents and get as much information from them as possible. And it's that constant dynamic relationship of you know what the needs are, what they do at home, what's happening at school, so we can make sure that things are consistent uh, within our programs. So we have that, and those are kind of our general programs and how we deal with integration. And then we have the sensory swim, which I believe Darby uh, spoke about. So we, uh, we um, team up with you guys for that, and uh, it's a great program through our aquatics department. And again, yes, it's, it's lower numbers and it's really suitable for those families with special needs. It's not just for children with special needs. I mean, the families with siblings and things can come and, and enjoy the pool time as well. So that's really great. And then we also have a specialized program called Play My Way. So that was formally known as Breaking the Boundaries for anybody um, that knew it by that name. But it's a program that we run on Saturdays, usually six week sessions and parents can drop in. They can either register or drop in. Um, there's both of those options. And they hang out at the Recplex. And the whole premise behind it is to get families together who have children with special needs. And we understand that you know, you're know you going through specific uh, circumstances. You have specific needs for the family. And we want to be able to team up with other families and get that community built and be able to talk to each other and be in an environment where all the other parents understand, you know, at least somewhat of what you're going through. And then the kids, we've purchased quite a bit of special needs like equipment. Um, we've got light tables and we've got things that are catered specifically towards special needs. So we've got that stuff for the kids to play with for a couple hours and, uh, and hopefully, yeah, just create that sense of community and then we can provide support. So beyond that, I'm just, uh, we're going to put in the chat, the uh, emails and phone numbers for myself. So if you have any general program questions, you're wondering about summer camp or things like that, direct them to me. But if you're wondering about anything specifically for special needs, reach out to Chrissy Flanny. So her information will be in there as well. And she can provide you any updates and those ongoing support. So if you're you know, currently struggling with something, we might be able to offer some suggestions or turn you over to PMFRC or another partner who can offer you some suggestions and support as needed. So, yeah. I know, that the PS, I know that the PSP Facebook page is also quite active. So we will uh, go in and we will share um, one of the recent before and after school programs, just so people will be able to find your page. Yes, um, also, we are a unique partnership in that we actually share a website with PSP. So <laughs> if you go to calfconnection.ca slash Petawawa, you can find about PMFRC programs and the PMSP, PSP programs. They are all there in one place. Darby, um, there are a lot of families in Petawaba who are thinking about, not thinking about, who are contemplating, who are dealing with postings right now. And uh, I think we all know how stressful postings can be at the best of times, um, let alone in the global pandemic, 
let alone if you uh, might have a family a member with special needs. Can you talk about how um, the PMFRC may be able to help some of these families and take some of the stress off? Definitely, Julie. It is a stressful time for any family, but especially in this global pandemic, not knowing what's really happening, we're here to support in any way we can, whether you're new to Petawa or whether you're leaving us, unfortunately, for another new adventure. Um, when families come to the family center on their house hunting trip or after they arrive and they're looking for community information, or when the military member comes into clearing, they can meet with Amy while they're there. That's her office. She's going to be found in that spot. Um, Amy can tell them about the different types of programs and supports that are available and specific things to their family needs at the PMFRC. Also what's available in Renfrew County, in the Ottawa region, and what's available online as well. We do have a resource binder for families at the Family Centre, and it's called the All About Me Guide. This is available in both English and French. And the binder is a place to keep letters, reports from healthcare professionals, letters from schools, and other information about your child all organized in one place. So that when you're moving from base to base, when the, the moving truck comes and takes everything away for you, you're not gonna lose all of that. You're gonna have it with you and be able to take it with you. When families are posted out of Petawawa, we're very sad to see them go, but Amy can facilitate that first connection to her colleagues at the next MFRC on the base that they're headed to. So families have information who to ask for and they know that before they move. So it's one less piece of stress. And if families want to do an official handover and have Amy introduce them, we can, I'm sure, organize that as well. So at least they have a face to and a name before they get there and maybe have had that initial conversation. Especially by a Zoom. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say, especially by a Zoom, it's really easy for now everybody to meet face to face virtually. So if you want to set that up before you head to your next base, just contact Amy. She can help you out. And who isn't looking for another meeting with all of your friends neatly stacked in boxes on your screens? I mean, <laughs> doesn't love that. Um, Chris, a lot of people have been talking to you about you and referring about you on this on the sidelines there. Um, one of the things that you do as a family advocacy coordinator is to help people access some of the special needs funding specifically through Support Our Troops. Can you talk about uh, the Support Our Troops funding and how a family would go about, what's the process for accessing that and how you can help them with that? Sure, thanks Julie. Um, under the Support Our Troops, they have many funding um, envelopes or umbrellas. But I specifically want to talk about the special needs funding uh, for this particular chat. And um, as we all know, no two families are the same and nobody fits into that pretty little cookie cutter. Uh, so I, I always suggest to families, give me a, a call if you're looking for funding resources for things like assessments, for things like uh, private swimming lessons. The list goes on and on and on, um, but uh, under the um, special needs fund, there is an application that uh, can support two main categories, assessment and other. And for assessment, one of the important pieces to remember is that military insurance or any um, employer's insurance, you check to see if uh, you're covered for assessments and most times you are up to a percentage. Supporter troops will absolutely uh, welcome looking at and reviewing, uh, supporting the uh, additional cost for any sort of assessment. And again, it's not black or white. So I'll just say, uh, open it up to have families uh, connect with me and we can certainly go through their individual questions and identify uh, if the support from supporter troops is the avenue to go. Uh, most times families don't realize that uh, there is funding for the little things. What do you mean I can get funding for um, some um, uh, chew toy uh, kind of simulation activities for children who might be on the um, spectrum who are having sensory uh, issues. As long as there's documentation supporting what the um, special requirement is, supporter troops is more than willing to uh, look at those applications. And so I am the, um, I guess the admin person for those applications, the MFRC itself doesn't have funds, which unfortunately is something that is out in the community. I often get calls and say, oh, people say the MFRC is going to give us money. Well, no, what the PMFRC has is my position to be able to guide you through an application that we can put forward for consideration uh, to be uh, looking at funds in a different uh, pot of money. And sometimes those applications can be a little daunting, the idea of it, and you've done it a number of times, so you can definitely walk them through it and take some of the uh, the mystery out of that. 
Amy, I'm going to give the last question to you um, and talk about a couple of things. And I'll sort of let, and if you want to add anything else, um, the PMFRC typically has a lending library uh, for families if uh, they want to borrow sensory equipment. We know a lot of the a lot of the equipment can be so expensive and you can sort of go ahead and purchase it and find out that it really wasn't that helpful for your child, your child doesn't like it. This gives military families an opportunity to actually get that in their house, try it, see if they like it. Unfortunately, because we're not seeing each other face to face and passing things from family to family doesn't seem like a smart idea in today's, uh, in today's climate. Um, we can't do that, but can you talk about the lending library, the kind of equipment that is available that's gonna be available again later? Um, and anything else that you want to share with families that might make this this time a little bit easier for them? Sure. So we are very fortunate to have a special needs equipment lending library in Padawawa. It began as a grant from True Patriot Love, and we're able to purchase items, um, specifically um, items that might be too expensive to to you know to purchase if you're really not sure if your child will even like it or not. So we have weighted items like weighted blankets, weighted lap pads, um, different sensory items, um, board games that require extra practice taking turns that might be might not be available at Walmart, but you know might be more of an educational game that we would have. Um, we have different kits uh, for helping to manage anxiety. Um, quite a wide, wide range of, of different things people can borrow. So the link to our learning library, um, it is online, but you can have a look at what we have. The link will be posted in the comments and families can at least now go ahead and have a look and see what we have. So that when we are open again, they can give me a call and we can set up a time for them to borrow things. Um, we did a bit of purchasing too this winter. So there's a few more things that we also have that aren't in there yet, but they will be posted shortly uh, when we're up and running again. Um, there's also a few other resources I'll mention too, other than the lending library, Julie, um, pandemic resources. So mm. there's lots of lots of um, families and children are struggling with understanding why can't we go out to play? Why is everything closed? Um, why is everyone wearing masks? And there's lots of resources um, that I've come across to help explain that. Um, there's a website called Autism Little Learners um, and they've come up with a social story explaining why we wear masks and um, just to help, uh, help children to understand that um, and also understand why other people are wearing masks. So that link will also be posted in the comments. And if any families are looking for more resources, I have several that I can share. So they're welcome to email me and, and uh, I can share some of those because a lot of a lot of feelings come up, right? When we're at home all day, we're together. And if, if we're not all um, understanding or if we're feeling frustrated about being home and being together, um, sometimes we need to talk about it. So there's lots of resources I can share with that. Um, and one uh, final thing I wanted to mention, uh, Claudia referenced the Provincial Special Needs and Inclusion Program. So I ha do have a colleague at each base, at each MFRC in Ontario, and we do meet quite regularly, uh, right now every two weeks, and we're able to share resources. And because a lot of these resources right now are online, they're also available to families living wherever you are. So if you're a family in Petawawa, but uh, the MFRC in Borden or Trenton is offering a great webinar and something of interest to you, you're welcome to participate in that. So as more of those become available, I'll be sharing those links as well. So families can participate in any of those. If they can't make the Exceptional Families Network on the night that I'm hosting it, maybe there's one happening in Trenton two weeks later, maybe that's a better date and time. They're welcome to connect with parents there as well. And there are other partner organizations like Autism Ontario that are regularly offering those online um, ways to connect. Um, and I can also connect families to those. Thank you, Amy, I appreciate that. So keep an eye on our Facebook page. We will go ahead and share those things as they come up. We will share uh, some resources from PSP so people will be able to access the programs that, uh, that Brittany was talking about. And we will absolutely include Chris's uh, email address and telephone number in the comments section. Um, if you do have questions about that support our troops funding, she is definitely there. In addition, uh, like we said, our doors are closed, but a number of our coordinators do have office hours. So if you want to link in by Zoom and ask a quick question, um, our VFP coordinator does have office hours, our volunteer coordinator, um, and as well as our deployment coordinator. So those are all on our Facebook page. Uh, last reminder before we go, tomorrow at four o'clock, uh, we are going to have the town hall with the commander here on Facebook Live. So if you do have questions, uh, be sure that add to our Facebook page. If it's a question you don't necessarily want to put in the chat, you can always send us a direct message. We'll get it that way. Um, so log on to Facebook at four o'clock tomorrow and you will be able to follow that along. I think that's all I have. Next week, we are going to be back with the our employment services team. 
uh, to talk about employment services, some of the supports that are available for those of you who may be looking for a job, um, as well as um, just some of the, an overview of what the labor market in this area is like right now, and some of the things that you may want to keep in mind as you embark on that job hunt journey. Thank you all for joining us. We appreciate you all signing in. Check out our website, cafconnection.ca slash Petawawa for all the news about what's happening at the PMFRC and at PSP. And we will see you next week. Thank you all.